ਕਹਿ ਸੰਗੀ ਗੁਰ ਪ੍ਰਸਾਦ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ 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 ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਸੋ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰ ਫਿਰ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਹੈ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੇ ਸਾਡੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸੰਗੀ ਹੈ ਗੁਰਮਤ ਗੁਰਬਾਣੀ ਦੀ ਕਲਾਸ ਆਪਾਂ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕੀਤੀ ਆ ਸੋ ਇਹਨੂੰ ਆਪਾਂ ਇੰਗਲਿਸ਼ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਿਆਦਾ ਰੱਖਦੇ ਕਰਕੇ ਅਗਲੀ ਜਨਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਆਪਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਜੋੜਨਾ ਪਰ ਇਹਦਾ ਮਤਲਬ ਇਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਵੀ ਆਪਾਂ ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੀ ਰਹਿਣਾ ਕਰਕੇ ਜੇ ਗੁਰਬਾਣੀ ਸੰਗੀ ਤਾਂ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਗੁਰਮੁਖੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਮਝਣਾ ਪਊਗਾ ਅਲਟੀਮੇਟਲੀ ਟ੍ਰਾਂਸਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਥੋੜਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਅਸਰ ਪੈ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਸੋ ਅਗੇਨ ਆਮ ਡਿਲਾਈਟਡ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਹੇਅਰ ਟੂਗੇਦਰ ਐਂਡ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਦ ਫਿਫਥ for the fifth session that i presented we had a session last week as well when we uh, discussed uh, the concept of needy being which led by by k justin and i think everybody really found that to be a <coughs> really amazing session very open dialogue exploration and sharing and so again we continue this method which is the method of gurunanak taught us of goshti karni gyan goshti karni dialogue karna it's a method that sadhya has died in our order and i think we can discuss another day why that's the case but um our focus is on the gurbani guru dev and we take what we can from these sessions but we also go away and research for ourselves and we've got no excuses now there's plenty of sources but it is important that you don't trust any one source i mean the only source we trust is gurudev sahib yeah but other than that you don't trust me dr the lojan singh any of the writers who have written about these things we learn from each other uh, and uh, ultimately sikhi is about self realization and that's what really matters so this we we did a, for those that didn't come last time we did a, like a poll as to what concepts we need to explore one of them was this concept of hirda yeah ਆਹੀ ਨੂੰ ਤਿਆਰੀ ਰਾਹ ਦਾ ਬੰਦੇ ਨੂੰ ਕਰਨਾ ਹਿਰਦਾ ਔਰ ਯੂ نو ਵੈਰੀ ਬੇਸਿਕ ਟ੍ਰਾਂਸਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਇਜ਼ ਦਾ ਸਪਿਰਚੁਅਲ ਸੈਂਟਰ ਐਂਡ ਦਾ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਇਜ਼ ਵੇਅਰ ਇਜ਼ ਇਟ ਯੂ نو ਵੇਅਰ ਇਜ਼ ਦਿਸ ਸਪਿਰਚੁਅਲ ਸੈਂਟਰ ਹਾਊ ਡੂ ਯੂ ਫਾਈਂਡ ਇਟ ਹਾਊ ਡੂ ਯੂ نو ਇਟਸ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੈਂਟ ਐਂਡ ਵਿਦ ਮੋਸਟ ਕਨ ਕੁਐਸਚਨਸ ਡੂ ਵਿਦ ਸਪਿਰਚੁਅਲਿਟੀ ਥੀਸ ਆਰ ਵੈਰੀ ਡਿਫਿਕਲਟ ਕੁਐਸਚਨਸ ਟੂ ਆਨਸਰ and uh, there's no kind of easy answer uh, as i say we come back to this thing of realization you know the answer is self realization and and that can be very personal and so you know, these are just some thoughts that i'm sharing the idea of a spiritual center is pretty universal it's not something that you find in gurbani but you find it in many traditions in fact you even find it nowadays in secular traditions as well and uh, i will touch on that one but basically uh, you can see some of these images there there's this image on the <coughs> on the right hand side uh, and this is an image of um, in, in tai chi or in in chinese philosophy that this idea of the chi the chi force yeah and and, and often it's seen as a kind of center of gravity of the body and that's very much related to this kind of energy so it's not the kind of energy that you would measure in a laboratory it's not the energy that goes through lights it's seen as a spiritual energy so that's one way you can think about the spiritual center as the concentration of spiritual energy within the body yeah other ideas are you've got these astral bodies and you must have come across these ideas and that's often in in imagery that's depicted and you find that with holy people you have this kind of glow that it is this something about a kind of surrounding kind of energy around it and you know some people say that you can feel that energy in people who have that kind of spiritual although i'm not quite sure how you would if you felt it kind of by heat then that would be heat energy as opposed i'm not sure whether spiritual energy has warmth in it but we often use these words you know we say that there's a warm glow coming from him or whatever yeah um in a sense language is always limited for the spiritual domain it can never absolutely represent that within the vedantic tradition there's this notion of the chakras yeah and the yogis and it's all about kind of these nine chakras 
and the, 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 the you know, the, you know we, I'm going to come back to this notion of Sasamagwa, the tenth door, and that that is the the third eye, the the, the, the ultimate kind of place where you get to. There, are, and again within the Chinese tradition, you have these some of the amount of them acupuncture. This idea that there are these energy flows in the body, uh, and, and uh, they're not kind of energy flows in the way which we, again we think about physical or measurable energy, but they're different. But, but of course, Chinese medicine, you know, it's ancient medicine, and, and they have these maps of all these points. Although Western scientists still don't really know what those points mean. Um, and then others talk about the brain, the mind, as it were. Yeah, that. That, that this this divine kind of entity, this uh, power, this soul, call it what you want, it, you know, it's somewhere in the brain. But the, it's important to know that this is a pretty enduring idea. It, you know, you can go for centuries, in millennia. You go to ancient Greece, you go back to the Vedas, and you go to the kind of you know Christianity, Buddhism. You find this idea. It's pretty universal. Now, one of the interesting things, if we accept the divine, you know, some people call it God, a spirit, it's real. Now, it's very difficult to know what you mean by real here, because some scientists would say something is real, but it can be measured, can be weighed, can be detected. Um, but is, is spirit like that? Um, and that raises another question. If it's, if it's real, then it has to be somewhere, yeah? It has to be contained somewhere. And, and that, that's when you begin to think about what part of the body might you find the spirit in. Um, but then you have to say, how is it attached? Uh, how does something that's spiritual become attached to something that's physical? Yeah, that, that it seems like you're almost kind of mixing two different spheres. Um, I suppose if you say that spirit is a supernatural force, yeah, that it, it's not it's supernatural, it's beyond nature, then what does it mean for it to be in some place? Because that almost contains it, yeah? It gives it natural characteristics. So that raises some interesting questions as well. But, you know, is, and the, the other question is, is that spirit, spiritual center only in living bodies? Or can it be in non-living bodies? Can it be in a rock? In which case, you know, how do you envisage it being a rock? Um, and are there aspects of physical bodies that we have not yet discovered? That might be another way to resolve this problem of the supernatural versus the natural. Is there another sphere of existence? And we can talk about dark energy, talk about you know quantum fields. Is that where we kind of might find this kind of supernatural, you know, non-physical, physical entity? Yeah. Do you get the point? There's a kind of slight kind of paradox around it. Is it physical? Isn't it physical? Uh, particularly when we try to attach it to a physical entity. And then, of course, the heart is one that's, uh, uh, you know, recurring, this idea that, and we often say, you know, your heart. So we, we, attach, we associate the heart with emotions, don't we? The sense. And actually, heart as an emotional, spiritual entity uh, uh, center in the body is a very common theme across all traditions. And traditionally, heart symbolizes emotions, you know, love, Compassion, and we often say that somebody's not very compassionate, they say he's heartless, don't we use this? Now the question is whether that, are we using that as a metaphor? Or are we saying that there's something about that person's heart that's kind of, that is defective, it's empty? And many cultures associate the heart with bitter emotions as well. Uh, actually, there's good reason why people might associate the heart with some kind of supernatural, some kind of other force. And that's because, and there's a picture there as well, that you can actually put a heart into a container and you can put certain chemicals in there and it keeps on beating, yeah? Because the heart has its own kind of uh, nerve system, if you like. Um, and so you can imagine how in, in, in previous times when people did have that kind of knowledge about the kind of biochemistry of the body, that if they saw a beating heart outside of the body, they would have thought, there's certainly something there, yeah? And that's why often in the ancient world, it, it wasn't until the heart stopped beating that people didn't say that this person, you know, the soul's left the body, now the heart stopped. So there's been an association with heartbeat and soul. Um, and, the, and I said, you know, in a sense, there's good logic behind that because it kind of makes sense. Um, 
But many only accept death when the heart stops uh, beating, although I think the testicle uh, definition for death now is when the brain stem doesn't have any signals, yeah, when it stops, you know, uh, signals. Or, and the heart could still be beating. Okay, so let's come on to the Hirda then. Uh, there's a Shabbat in Bani. This, I mean, there's lots of Shabbat in Bani that use the word Hirda. And this is one that I particularly, uh, it's from Guru Arjun. He says, Hirde Nam Vasayo Sara Beite Guru Teayo. Enshrine the name of the divine within your heart. So here we could say Hirda refers to the heart. I'll come back to this. Reflect on the Guru sitting within your own form. So this idea of the divine in the body, in your physical body, is replete. It's there. It's, it's there. And, uh, and, and Hirda is this place where it seems to be particularly. Uh, now, this, you've still got the question whether that's a metaphor or whether it physically is in the heart. Yeah, we can, we can explore that. But Hirda, so that should be, I don't know where Hilda's going, but this is Hirda, refers to the heart or the soul, emphasizing the seat of spiritual consciousness. Yeah? Hirda. And, and it's a Sanskrit word. Hirdya means this, and I am, which simply means this is the center, yeah? So Hirda means this is the center, uh, rather than this is the heart, although we associate with the heart, okay? Uh, and debate as to whether this is a physical or a spiritual concept, yeah? Or whether the spiritual can be physical. Mm. So we'll explore this a bit more. There's another concept that's very close to Hirda, and in fact it's often used in Chichen, it's called Nijkar, yeah? The inner being, the, the, your personal house, your house, yeah? Nijkar. And there's a, there's a couple of shams that I've got from Guru Arjun Devji. One is, Kojita Kojita Nijkar Paya. Seeking and searching, I found the divine deep within my inner being, my Nijkar. So again, that often would be seen as in your Hirda, yeah? A mole of the sati dikhlaya, and priceless jewels have been revealed to me there. So there's something about within you, there are these kind of very priceless kind of spiritual gifts, if you like. Yeah, we call them jewels, insights within you. Nijikar mehel, nijikar mehel, within the home of your inner being, you shall obtain inner peace. With the intuitive ease, you shall not be confined again to the wheel of time. In a sense, here to see Nidika Devacha Vasanya, if you if you can find your home within your own being, then you become timeless. That's going back to the Gita Matakal Mud, yeah? Borno Hilgo Fera. That means now you've come out of time. You've come into Sarja Vasasya again. You're the Nidika and Mahel. There is Sukri Sarja in us. You know, you you discover that. Not overnight, it's, you know, sad enough. So this notion of Nijikar and Hirda are very close. I'm just exploring some other concepts that seem to be used interchangeably with, uh, Nij uh, with uh, Hirda. So the body or the temple of, uh, or, or house of the divine is again something that you can find in other traditions. In fact, I've got a couple of shells here, one from Guru Amar Das Ji and Guru Granth Sahib Ji, and one from actually the Bible, and it, it's almost identical. So this is uh, in some, in, from Corinthians. It says, Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have of God, and that you are not your own. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Yeah? So the notion of a temple. And uh, here we've got again something similar, but slightly more variation. This Behi under Panjachorvate. So here it's Guru Sahib saying, within the body, there are these five seeds. And that's a metaphor for the, for the, the, the five uh, deadly sins, if you like, the, you know, Tam, Krod, Lod, Lohukara, yeah? The five um, uh, ego states, if you like, desire, anger. Greed, attachment, and pride. And it says, Amrata Lute Manmukanin Bujje Korina Sane Pukara. They plunder the net nectar, the Amrat within you. Anda Jagat Anda Vartara Baj Guru Tavara. The world is blind, its dealings are blind as well. Without the Guru, there is only pitch darkness. 
So here again is this idea that the body, within the body, is the body is a vessel for the divine, for the Amrit itself, yeah? Uh, and, and uh, you know, there are other shabs that talk about Amrit being within everybody. Uh, but it's our ego that then depletes the Amrit, yeah? This is what the shab is saying. It, 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 it kind of depletes your Amrit. But then it's still this idea that within the body there is some kind of place where there is a spiritual center. Or Kajana, we can say we talk about it as a Kajana, as this treasure. This is Ratan Amol Kajana. So, Shabriya, in the Haramandar Sadir, it says your, your body is Haridamandar, it's the house of God. And which Gyan, Ratan Parakato, it says within that body you have the knowledge, the, the jewels of knowledge, yeah? And, and that you can reveal, you can have them revealed to you. Now, some people say that, that that reference is to the power of the brain, yeah, because it's about Gyan. Others would say that it's, it's some other spiritual kind of um, realization, if you like. There's another word as well that comes in Gurbani quite a lot. It's Kat. Yeah? Kagenu Tenka Kat. Yeah? I'm sure you've heard of this one as well. I just, I just get a, I did many shabs with this. I just got Kagur Nanak Devi Ji Sache Te Pavana Paya. From timeless entity came the air and from air came water. Yeah, straightforward. Sadke te pavna paya, pavne te jal hoye. The sequence is, jal te tre pavan sadhya. From water he created the three worlds. That's really the kind of, the, the universe as we know it, yeah, the existence. And then it says, kat kat jyot ki hoye. In every heart he has infused his life, yeah. So here, cut again is is a heart, and also like Hirda is a heart as well. Two cut, cut the answer. If you have a button, two cut, cut the answer. Have no answer. Are equal to the Kajana. You are constantly reaching every heart and all of it. You are the one entity that enjoins all. Now here, that's very interesting. Uh, all things. So that's this idea that you are within the heart of everything. Now. You know, a rock doesn't have a heart. Uh, a, a tree doesn't have a heart, does it? I mean, I'm not sure it has a heart. So in what sense do you think Guru Nanak is talking about uh, the Ode Vechbi Paramatma has that? Ode Vechbi, that is still the temple of God. And, uh, you know, you can speculate on that. And you can you could say that maybe with, it's within every cell of the body, yeah? That every cell of the body has a kind of a heart. It's called the nucleus. And you could go further and you could speculate that maybe what, what, what Gurbani is saying is that it's within every, with every nucleus of an atom. Yeah? Uh, and you can go to a, a quantum level there. But I think that it's clear that the fact that these terms are used interchangeably, and sometimes they're used with great precision, referring to a part of the body, but other times it's, it's more kind of a general idea that it's in, this, it's in the center of something. Yeah? I think you, you would want us to, that leads you to think that this isn't, uh, this is a much more kind of dispersed concept of spirit and that we're using language to make sense of that. Another concept that's also related is called the Dasan Dwar. Yeah, Dasan Dwar. And uh, I'm going to just put, read out this Lomaja Shabd, but it's a very powerful Shabd. It says, Anam Shabd, right? The divine placed the soul in the body and blew into the breath of life. Yeah? Uh, or like a flute, you blow into the flute and then that makes a sound. And so it's using a similar metaphor is that uh, you know, the body is being created and then the force is put into the body. Vajaya, Vajja, Pono, Dore, Pargatriye. In doing so, the nine doors were opened, you know, and these are the nine doors is your eyes and ears. Yeah, the nine kind of out doors outward. But he said, Vajaya Vajaya Pono Dwari Dasma Dasma Das Dwari Pargati Kiyev Dasma Gupta Dwari on the Bandratya closed. And then it says, Guru Dwari Lai Pavni Ikna Dasma Dwari But if you enter the, the door of God, 
with faith, with love, then you can see the tenth door. The tenth door will open. Um, and when that is open, there a new group of non-members. This da angna jai paya. They onalo they experience the limitless bliss, if you like, the nine treasures of the north. Kya na na karte ya ji jiyo gopa angarake vaja pavan ho jaye. So this is the notion of the best of here. Yeah. Again, I think we can all kind of calculate what that that that's madhuri. It's certainly within Vedantic philosophy. This is linked back to the chakras. Yeah, the the tenth door is. The, the, but uh, I think mm -hmm. here, I don't think that if if anything, my own personal view is that this is, uh, and you find within you know within Buddhism as well, yeah, this is the eye, the third eye, and. Um, uh, you know, I, I I would speculate that it's something to do, and, and scientists are also studying that within the brain. There's a certain, they call it the God Center, if you come across research. I don't know if it's a pituitary gland or it's some, it's a, it's a gland that secretes certain hormones in the body. And they've done research saying that people who practice meditation have higher kind of concentration, and that releases serotonin and all these things. So whether, whether, I mean, as I say, there's something called Rama Chad, who's a professor at Harvard or something. He's been doing research on the God Center. You can look it up, yeah. Uh, but there's certainly something in the body there that kind of seems to be associated with the kinds of emotions that you might experience in spiritual bliss. That's Madhwar. So that's almost kind of taking uh, Hibda into the brain rather than into the heart, yeah? So we're moving from the brain to the heart, to the kind of body, to, to the cells. And here we are now into the brain, the mind, if you like. And here Gurbani says, Mantu Jyota Sarupa hai, Apana Mool Pachan. And this is pretty say, Oh, mind, you are the embodiment of the divine life, yeah? Recognize your origin. Yeah? So here it seems like divinity is found in the mind, in consciousness, if you like. Man Haji Tere Naal hai Gurmati Ramma. Oh, my mind, how the divine is with you. Enjoy his love. And when you recognize your origin, and when you know your divine husband, Lord, in, in Gurbani, uh, we are all referred to in the feminine, and Paramatma uh, is referred to in the masculine, although there are other shabd where it talks about Gurdev, Mata, Gurdev, Pita, yeah? Uh, but it's just this kind of the way it's set out. It says that Guru Prasad ji ekwa janata duja pao na hoi. So duja pao can also be linked to kind of, that you no longer are in love with materialism as it were. Yeah? That you are, you are, that is true love. Man shat ai vajiv rai ta hua parman. Peace comes to the mind and gladness resounds. Eho kahe, eho kahe nanak man tu jo sarup hai apana mool pachan. So again, this last line, it's repeated the same line, that you know, emphasized. So here we seem to be looking for the divine in the mind. Now, that solves one problem, but it creates a whole lot of other problems, because what is the mind? And again, there's plenty of philosophers and scientists and psychologists trying to figure out the mind. Is it, is it just part of the kind of physical body, you know, the brain cells, or does it, I mean, because we, we, we perceive ourselves now to be outside our bodies, don't we? You know, we, we, when we look, we, we think we're outside our mind. So in some sense, our mind is extending beyond our body, isn't it? But at other level, if you just look at basically at the, kind of, uh, at the level of science, then actually everything we perceive outside is really just within our own kind of brain, yeah? But then it raises the question about perception itself. What is perception? Are we just in this kind of quiet room you know, kind of hallucinating about existence, or is, you know, there's that famous philosophical kind of conundrum, if a tree falls in a forest and nobody is there to witness it falling, did it fall? It's kind of, did it fall? And anyway, even if you witnessed it falling, is it really just falling in your mind? Yeah. I'll leave you to ponder on that one. Um, just to... Okay, one of the things is, that we often in, 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 
imagery, in art, and even within language, we will start to give the spirit, the divine spirit, Atma, call it what you want, a shape, yeah? We will shape it, with, in, uh, so that often we, the heart is going to be shaped like that. Uh, and you will also find other kind of ways in which, I mean, like ghosts and things, you find these spirits that are in, in certain shapes. But there's a paradox here, I think. It goes back to my original proposition that if something is spiritual, by definition, it can't be material, yeah? And then if it's not material, then in what sense it, are we de detecting that? You can't detect it scientifically. You can only detect it through some kind of faith, you know, through belief. So if, 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 if somebody says, I saw a spirit, or I experienced a spirit, I think what they're saying is that that's my faith in that experience, as opposed to that, that being some empirical, it might be for them, subjectively an empirical statement for them, but once you start to test that in the laboratory, then you'll find that it doesn't stack up, yeah? But that's maybe because we're applying a test to something that shouldn't be applied. If it's, if it's by definition, if it's spirit, it's metaphysical. And if it's metaphysical, then it has no place in the laboratory. Does that kind of make sense, yeah? Um, it cannot be detected. Now, Gurbani talks both about the human spiritual center, his that, man, you know, we talked about that. But also that the divine resides in the hearts of all living forms, life forms. So that begins as you can either say this must be a universal kind of energy that that that's kind of pervasive, <coughs> and you know, it's the atma paramatma Or you can say that it, 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 it's a, it, it's it's a form that you simply can't be detected within traditional science. Um, and here, as I say, it may well be that quantum theory and cosmology may be able to answer some of these questions. You know, is it another dimension? A lot of cosmologists talk about many dimensions, multiverses and things like that. Is that way to think about, and there are some people trying to say, oh, Guru Nanak is also talking about multiple dimensions and cosmology. I'd like to suggest that Guru Nanak is talking about experience and realization uh, rather than, you know, don't turn him into a scientist. But that doesn't mean that, this is really important, and I should have mentioned this earlier. That doesn't mean that even in the times of the Buddhas, or even before, 4,000 years ago, people were not using reason and rationality to explain phenomena. They were. Uh, the, the, in fact, the Egyptians, you know, the, the, anybody been to the Valley of the Kings in, in Egypt and the Nile? Well, the, the Valley of the Kings, uh, that's in, in a place called... Um, uh, Thebes, it was the ancient city of Thebes, that's where they found Tutankhamun's tomb and things. And that's, um, it's, um, it's called Luxor today. That spot is perfectly under the, kind of the, 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 the equator. So the sun, 365 days a year, rises the same way and you know, sets. And so it used to rise on one side of the Nile and then set on the other. And the other side is where they used to put their, bury their pharaohs. And also in the desert, in that point, it, in, in pitch black, you can see shooting stars all the time. So they often associated, you know, people, that kings who died, uh, that they were shooting stars. And uh, that's why they used to put chariots and food in the, in, for the tombs of the pharaohs, yeah, for their journeys. Now, actually, that's a pretty logical explanation. If, in fact, it was so logical that it, it stayed for thousands of years. And it's, it's only in more recent times that people question that, yeah? Now you would say it's absurd, yeah, that somehow... But you can see how within the confines of their own tools, they were astronomers, they, you know. But today, you, you would say we've got instrumentation that can measure certain things. I'll give you an example of that. Uh, think about schizophrenia. You know, if somebody... Anybody, I don't know if anybody in the medical profession here, but... Paranoid schizophrenics kind of like talk with a different voice. They will often hear a different voice in the head. And they will, they will display them sometimes as different characters. Now you can imagine in a society where schizophrenia, it's not even been invented or hasn't been actually identified as a mental illness, that that's pretty good evidence that this person is possessed by a spirit. Yeah. And in fact, it would be irrational to say otherwise. Would be now because we can then demonstrate this person's got some chemical imbalances. So, so that's where I think some of this idea about spirit being in a certain place or certain, you know, possession comes. But as human beings, I think either because of our superior intelligence or through scripture, both text and secular and religious as well, 
stories and objectives, we have the capacity to imagine other dimensions of existence. This is our nature, yeah? That's why we can imagine the spirit. That's why we can imagine afterlife or all these things, yeah? But the belief in spirits infusing the body and society existed before modern science and technology. So they've offered a reasonable explanation at the time. And I've mentioned schizophrenia as a spirit possession of unique concept. But today you wouldn't say that somebody who has voices is possessed by a spirit. Some people would. But others would say, no, this, this person needs to get some kind of mental, you know, medical diagnosis. Scientists have sought to test for the presence of spirit as well, uh, in and outside of the body, but the evidence is not conclusive yet. And it won't be because, by definition, the spirit is, hasn't got a weight, you know. You know, because somebody speculates that if you die, do you, does your weight get less? You know, if does a soul leave the body, or is a soul weightless? If it's weightless, in what sense are we thinking about it being in the body? So scientists do try to prove that, but the evidence is not conclusive. Uh, so one must conclude, and this is my own conclusion, that Hirba and related concepts function as metaphors for discussing our spiritual souls and realization. Yeah, that they're very powerful metaphors, and they, 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 you know, they because they're rooted in history, then they carry certain kind of symbolism as well. But they are metaphors to talk about something that's deeply personal to yourself. Why good deed got called first? Why good deed got called? So there you are.